Today we're going to replace the power supply in this 84 through 88 Corvette instrument panel. This doesn't apply to the 89 as the power supply for the 89s is built onto the logic board itself. It is not separate like it is on the 84 through 88s. We know from our troubleshooting that this is bad. Note that I am wearing my static wrist bracelet. The uh, 84 through 88 clusters are especially static sensitive, so we want to make sure that we don't damage anything while we're working on this. I'm also working on a static protected surface. The first step is going to be to remove the power supply. I'm going to use a flat blade screwdriver, or in this case we've got a small pry bar, and we're going to lift at each of the three hold down clips and pop those loose. Next, we're going to straighten that connector out and we're just going to cut that. I'm using an X-Acto knife and I'm just cutting between each of the two wires. Be careful not to cut ourselves and not to cut into this inductor behind them. If we have any uh, plastic clips remaining, we're just going to pop those out with a set of side cutters or pliers. And we'll turn the board over. If we look at the back side of the circuit board, uh, this is almost always covered in what is known as a conformal coating. This is a, a plastic coating. It's a goo that is supposed to protect these, the back side of the circuit board if it happens to be exposed to the elements. There are a couple of options here. We can use some alcohol and a brush and remove that conformal coating. Or we can just solder through it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small amount of fresh solder and I'm going to feed it into each of these connections, work it around, and that just sort of melts the conformal coating stuff that's on there. We'll do that for each of these connections. Next, we're going to heat each of those wires and pull them out the top side. Next, we're going to feed in a little bit of fresh solder. And we're going to use our vacuum solder removal tool to clear out those holes. Other options here are desoldering braid. Other options here are desoldering braid or a vacuum rework station. If, uh, if we don't clear the hole out the first time, we're just going to heat that. We're going to leave the heat on for about 5 to 10 seconds to make sure that it heats all the way through the board. And then we'll try the vacuum solder removal tool again. In this case, it looks good. And we'll go ahead and reinstall our new power supply. The power supply kit comes with a power supply with uh, the new wires and clips installed. And it also comes with a supply of solder. We will pull the protective insulation off of the wires and we'll bend them over. Then we're going to insert that cable into those eight holes. We're going to make sure that the red stripe is lined up with the, the side marked pin 1. It's really the only, only way this will fit. We're going to hold that in place and we're just going to press those clips to install the new supply. That'll hold everything in place while we solder it. All right, we're going to use some of this magic liquid flux. This isn't necessary, but it does a great job of changing the viscosity of the solder and let it, letting it run into these very small holes. We're going to start with a nice clean soldering iron and we're going to 
heat the junction between the pin and the pad. We're going to feed in a small amount of solder. This is, I'd, I'd say I use less than a quarter of an inch of the solder that we supply. We're going to remove the heat and let that cool. And then we're going to go to the other side and we'll do the same thing. Tacking it in place on both sides will hold that cable in place while we solder everything else. We'll go down the line one at a time. We're heating the junction between the pin and the pad. We're feeding in some fresh solder. And then we're removing the heat and moving on to the next pin. We're going to solder all eight of those. Next, we're going to liberally apply some isopropyl alcohol. We'll use our nylon bristle brush and we'll clean up the rosin. So what we're looking for is to make sure that we don't have any bridges between any two of these pins. We don't have solder between any two of these pins that would indicate a solder bridge. And we don't. We have nice, uh, clean, bright, shiny connections that indicate that we don't have a cold solder joint and everything is convex in shape. If we see a ball of solder, if we see gray or dark or um, crystalline looking solder joint, it indicates a cold solder joint and we would want to remove that solder and solder it again. This looks good. We're going to bend this over slightly so that we can put the back on. We're going to make sure the power supply is clipped in place. And that completes the process of installing this 84 through 88 power supply. My name is Brian Thompson, and I founded the website Batty.com, where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry. We have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.